I am not a speechwriter, nor am I a gifted orator by any means. I am a dancer. I am a choreographer. I'm a teacher, a rehearsal director. I'm a husband and a son. I'm an advocate and a fighter, a lover and a listener, and I am one hell of a dreamer. So I must admit that when I first heard the conference theme exploding the boundaries of dance, I was a little bit taken aback, I have to say. For some very bizarre reason, probably the fault of my over-imaginative mind, the word exploding kept ringing in my ears, and images of explosions kept racing through my mind. Images of war and destruction, bombs exploding left, right, and center, planes crashing in the apocalypse and the brink of civilization. And Now I digress, but I am assuming that this was not the intended thesis for this conference. And as someone with a keenly developed set of procrastination skills, I decided to look up the word explode in the dictionary. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, as, I've <laughs> as I've alluded to already with my imaginative opening, the first definition of explode unanimously defines it in terms of bombs with vividly violent phrases that touch upon sudden chemical reactions that produce heat, noise, and light, and ultimately destruction. But if you scroll further down the long list of definitions, usually around entry seven in most lists, you find this definition. Explode, to show to be false or unreliable, to explode a hypothesis, or explode, to bring into disrepute or to discredit, to explode a theory. Now, I'm fairly certain that the organizers of this conference had this definition in, in mind. And today, as Amanda said, you will meet many artists from Toronto's vibrant dance community, many of whom I consider as colleagues and friends. They will lead you through various formal and informal conversations about a wide array of topics that will hopefully pique your interest, challenge your preconceived notions, and widen your own definition of what dance can and should be. But now, just for fun, and for the sake of my speech, let's go back and stick with the first definition of the word explode for a while. We deal with all kinds of explosions every day of our lives, some small, some large, all with varying degrees of destructive force. You know, we accidentally bump into someone passing on the sidewalk and we spill our coffee on the ground, we drop our newspaper. This is like a small electric spark. We miss our flight home for the holidays and a bomb just exploded in the pit of our stomachs. Or our computer crashes just as our deadline approaches and we feel like a supernova just exploded in space. Thankfully, my computer did not crash last night. <laughs> These explosive analogies are also applicable to our lives as dancers. We twist our knee or ankle in class and we feel like a stick of dynamite just blew up. We get rejected at yet another audition and that geyser keeps spewing hot liquid from our wounds. And we all have those little landmines in our brains that go off every time we doubt our decisions or whenever we think that we're not good enough. So the question is how do we diffuse these bombs and stop them from exploding? Well the short answer is we can't. These events that happen and these feelings that we feel are quite often out of our control and it's quite frankly a waste of our energy and a waste of our time to even attempt controlling them. So a better question is how do we prepare ourselves for these inevitable explosions in our lives and in the context of our time here today in our dance lives? I'd like to offer just one way forward. There are many ways forward, but for me, one way forward. I encourage everyone in this room to connect with your community. This seems like a fairly straightforward idea, but it is often more complicated than we think. As you all graduate or move on from your respective training programs, you may find yourself alone, away from the safety and security of your educational experience. Some of you here today will be lucky enough to find dance work rather quickly, and others of us will not. These first few months out of school can be scary and incredibly daunting. This is where community comes into play. The relationships that you make with your classmates now will form the basis of your support network 
and the raw meat of your community. So what does this connection look like? Well, you've all taken a very important first step today by attending this conference. Again, I want you to take a look around right now. Seriously, look around the room. <laughs> look around at all the different people in the room. These people are your colleagues. These people are your friends, or will be your friends after today, maybe. Your collaborators. Some of these people in your room may become your dancers. Others might be your choreographers. This is your community, and in 10 or even 20 years from now, this will still be your community. We connect to our community by continuing the learning process. I urge you to continue to take class on a regular basis and attend workshops to learn inspiring new techniques or dance styles. You can also continue to learn by reading literature about dance history or a choreographer's biography or a recent study about the effects of dance on health and wellness. You know, any bit of knowledge you acquire about dance becomes fuel for your artistic work and your life. We connect to our community by actively watching and responding. I encourage you to attend as many dance shows as you possibly can. Not only are you supporting the work of other dance artists, but you're meeting familiar faces at every performance. And do not shy away from offering criticism or discussing what you see. This community needs well-articulated speakers and writers to talk about dance in positive ways. We connect to our community by becoming active citizens. Dancers must become knowledgeable advocates for the art form. Membership organizations like the Canadian Alliance of Dance Artists, the Dancer Transition Resource Center, Canadian Dance Assembly, Dance Ontario, among many, many others, offer valuable services for dance artists and many tools for professional development and advocacy. Personally, as a member of all of these organizations, and as the chair of the Canadian Alliance of Dance Artists, which I hope you join, <laughs> I encourage you to join each of them. You may not see the value in these memberships now, but trust me, please trust me, they are so, so, so important for your future. As I stated earlier, your first few months out of school might be terrifying, but an impending sense of doom and gloom is not the only reason to connect with your community. Quite frankly, we connect so that people will hire us. The hope that someone will see us in class and ask us to audition for them, or they will remember that time we voluntarily distributed some postcards and then they'll hire us for a later project. But perhaps the most important reason to connect to a community of like-minded individuals comes from our desire to understand and to be understood. No one can understand the rigors of a busy rehearsal schedule or a repetitive strain injury like another dancer can. Falling out of a double pirouette in a solo stage performance, which I'm not going to do today, may not, mean a lot to, may not mean a lot to most people, but to all ballet dancers, it's cert they certainly understand that disappointment. And when a street dancer finally masters a particular freeze after months of trying, his or her fellow b-boys or b-girls will readily applaud. So now that we know that community connection is important, how do we connect? I'd like to make a simple recommendation. Ask a question. A question is the most important sentence you will ever speak in your life. A question is an opportunity. It's a moment for your voice to be heard and it's the beginning of a conversation. Questions are also a powerful tool. Often they put you in charge of a conversation. When you ask a question, there is a strong social pressure from your person you're talking to to respond. And what you gain from questions is information. By asking the right questions, you can uncover all kinds of useful information that you can use to achieve your goals. One of my personal favorite things to do is just listen to an artist talk about their work. I, I think it's utterly fascinating to listen to artists talk. And the easiest way to get your favorite choreographer or the director of that company to talk is to ask questions. The more you ask, the more you're able to listen to those responses. Now, when you ask a question, most people expect an answer. Answers are good, they're fine. Answers are usually exact, they're definite, and they offer a solid base for the next step. Okay, I'm just gonna come out and say it, I don't like answers. 
Answers are impermeable and inflexible. They are limiting, and they often kill a conversation. I rarely search for answers in my everyday life. Instead, I look for responses. Responses allow us to make our own connections, to formulate new ideas, and give us space to ask more questions. We are often seemingly addicted to answers, finding the right one, what happened, who's to blame. There is often such absolutism in the search for our answers that it blinds us to the possibilities around us. I think it's time that we stop being answer patients and start patiently searching for responses. So with all this information about community connections and asking questions, well, that, you know, that's all well and good, but you might be thinking to yourself, what can I do here at this conference today? Well, as you listen to all these wonderful presentations today, I encourage you to question everything. I want you to ask lots of questions, start many conversations, and I hope you receive lots of responses. And also, I encourage you to ask questions of yourself and respond, not in a crazy, who is that guy in the corner talking to himself kind of way, but more in a productive, self-reflexive way. I'd like to go back to the theme of the conference, exploding the boundaries of dance, and I'd like to also return to my favorite analogy of the day, explosions. <laughs> there will be many explosions throughout your dance career. You won't get the job, or your grant doesn't succeed, or you become injured. Now I want you to imagine, think of any explosion you have ever seen in a movie or on television. It's quite spectacular, you have to admit. But have you ever wondered where the fragments from that explosion ended up? Because usually you see the explosion in these action movies, and they happen, and you've already moved on to the next scene. So yes, you may not have success in one respect of your career, but I encourage you to follow the path of all the fragments and focus some energy on them. You may find that those fragments have landed in theater or in aerial dance or opera or in teaching or writing. And who knows, those fragments could feed into your career as a performer or even better yet, those fragments could combine together to create a very amazing and fantastic career. To close, I want to wish all of you a wonderful conference today, filled with openness, questions, and connections. And furthermore, I wish for each of your explosions throughout your dance career to be beautiful and stunning displays of fireworks that bring people together to watch in awe as you light up the night sky with your talent, your intelligence, and your generosity. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you.